Well, Novak Djokovic is obviously going for his 24th Grand Slam. Um, that would be tying Margaret Court as uh, the best ever uh, tennis player, male or female. Uh, Margaret Court did it in, in the, not in the open era, so you can't really compare it, but it's a number. Uh, so he'll be the best ever. Now, to me, it's, he's not just the best ever compared to other people. I think that 2023, I think we're seeing the best version of Novak Djokovic. The way that he won the Australian Open uh, was incredible. He was hitting the, the forehand harder than he ever had before. Was it because he had a, a little bit of a nagging injury in his right leg because he had some tape on there? Did he relax more? I don't think so. Then we go to the French Open and then we see the way that he played there, which was absolutely incredible in the semifinals against Carlos Alcaraz. Same thing, dictating at 36 years old. So is it, a, is it an age thing that he's realized, I need to be a little bit more aggressive because I'm most probably not going to rebound after long matches the same as I did when I was 26 years old. So with this, he is a better player. He hits the ball harder. Uh, he's obviously uh, becoming smarter and smarter. He's, he was already smart as, as a young player, but but the, the tennis IQ is coming out more in his game. He hits the slice back and he hits drop shots. He comes to the net. Every aspect of his game seems to be a little bit better now than I think it's ever been. Maybe not the movement because of the age, but to me, Novak is, is not only the best ever on the men's side, but he is the best ever version of himself. So I think that you have to compare uh, with uh, Roger and Rafa. You have to compare with how Roger looked towards the end of his career. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, his, his last match came here at Wimbledon against Hubert Horkacz. Unfortunately, he lost the last set six love. Uh, of course, Hubert Horkacz shows that, that he's a great uh, grass court player. But uh, Federer looked a little bit slow in that match, possibly. Rafa Nadal, when he came back and won the Australian Open last year, that was just an unbelievable effort that I didn't think we we're going to see. And then it took some time for him to come back. And I wasn't sure because he was knackered in that match and, and he kind of showed his age. But experience got him across the line against Daniil Medvedev. Then he comes and wins the French Open and he's so good again. So it's been a roller coaster for Rafa the whole time. But I've always sort of felt like, okay, so it's natural. You can see it in him that he's slowing down a little bit. He's also changed his game playing more aggressively. With Novak, there's no difference. The movement is similar. Uh, he looks the same. Um, uh, Body-wise, he's stronger, actually. He's, he's got stronger muscles on his legs. Uh, the definition is more there. So he, he's just, um, he, he basically is the best ever version. So in terms of numbers, I don't know why he shouldn't be able to win 28, 29, 30 Grand Slams, because I think that he's a favorite for Wimbledon, which then makes him the favorite for the US Open. He's the favorite in the Australian Open because he's won it 10 times. He's now the defending champion at next year's French Open. I don't see a sign that tells me that he's slowing down. I see a lot of signs that tell me that he's actually getting better. Can I just pause? Sorry. Of course. Inter uh, interviews for Selena now. Now? Yeah. Off you go. Sorry. I have one more question, but sorry don't worry so, about So sorry. Like, it, it, yeah, sorry. No, the beauty of my mic. Cutting every time. Thank you very much. Apologies, guys. Thank you. Matches off. Yeah, yeah.